I'm Jenna and this is Nonfic Books and I have my third video for you in the Women's History Month series that I'm doing and that is a review of Antonia Fraser's My History, a memoir of growing up. And this was published in 2015 by Wiedenfeld and Nicholson which is part of the Orion Group and then this is 301 pages long with quite a lot of lovely illustrations in it. And if you have a look at the back, wasn't she a beauty? And Antonia Fraser you may well have heard of, she is quite a famous historian and she's also quite a well-renowned novelist with a series of detective books focusing around Jemima Shaw. And she has also been married twice, once to Hugh Fraser, a conservative MP, and then once to the very famous playwright Harold Pinter. And she has previously written a autobiography focusing on the latter part of her life with Harold Pinter called Something Like Must You Go? Um, but I haven't read this, so this is the first sort of autobiography of hers that I've read. I haven't actually read very much by Antonia Fraser before. I think the only thing I've read is a book that she edited, which was The Pleasure of Reading, which I did review, so I'll leave a link down below for that if you're interested. But I have quite a few of her books because the periods of history she writes about particularly fascinate me. She's got a book on Marie Antoinette which the film was based on but I'm not going to judge it on that because that film was dreadful and so far her writing has been of a very high standard so I will approach that book without linking it to the film personally. And she's written on um, Warrior Queens and Louis XIV and there's quite a large variety. The Gunpowder Plot so she's got a really nice back catalogue of books. This particular biography is going up, autobiography is going up until she marries Hugh Fraser, when she was in, I believe, around her mid-twenties, so it really is the sort of growing up initial stage of her life. She comes from a fairly privileged background, and you may well know that she has the honourable title Lady Antonia Fraser. Um, so she's not really, although the beginning sort of starts with her mum highlighting that she was from a middle class family, it's not really what most of us would describe as a middle-class upbringing. She is surrounded by Oxford dons because her father's an Oxford don and politicians because both her mother and her father were heavily involved in politics for the Labour Party around the wartime. And then on large estates, especially in Ireland, because her surname Pakenham is... There's actually a Pakenham house in Ireland and they spent a lot of time going over to there and her father eventually inherited it and I believe now her brother owns it. But So it's a really quite privileged upbringing but very interesting because she was born in 1932 so growing up she did go through the Second World War and a lot of her life was based, especially in this book, just after the war and still feeling the effects of the war so that's something that I find particularly fascinating. Um, Antonia Fraser was a very sort of headstrong, not always totally um, good, she's quite a naughty young woman in points um, and she lived a very interesting life. Part of it focuses on the political life that she sort of became involved with because of how heavily her parents were involved in. Um, her father did eventually win a seat, I believe, and her mother went in for a few seats but didn't actually win, but again was heavily involved. And her father did a lot of very good work um, in, with rehabilitating prisoners. Um, I can't remember their names off the top of my head, but I'll put them down below because both her mother and her father were fascinating people in their own rights. And eventually her mother, actually before Antonia published any of her histories, wrote... Um, a biography of Queen Victoria so it's she was very much surrounded by very literary very intelligent sort of people and her childhood seemed to be very happy in places she didn't enjoy a particular boarding school but she spent a while being evacuated to a, a one of her I think family or friends anyway um, country houses where six children ended up spending a lot of time together and having an absolute well of a time which she recounts as being one of the happiest parts of her childhood but what she didn't realise at the time and she said this to her mother later her mother just totally fell to pieces a bit because it was a really horrific time for her mother because her father um, was going through a lot of difficulty in the war and having a basically a nervous breakdown because of it and the mother was having to deal with that on top of everything so it was quite an interesting look at how very much things can be tinted through 
wonderful rose coloured glasses when you're a child and then you look back and talk to the adults who were around at the time and life was very very different for you. As she grows up she works very hard, she went to what had only recently become a co-ed school but was previously a very strongly academic boys school so for the time she was very well educated for a woman and ended up getting a place at Oxford. Before she went to Oxford, because she'd finished school at 16, she spent a little bit of time working and travelling to different places, and those are absolutely fascinating, the people she met through doing that. Um, and then she sort of brought herself out. Her mum was not interested in bringing her out as a debutante, because she was far too heavily involved in politics and didn't really have time to do that and didn't really think that that was a particularly valuable thing to do. So Antonia brought herself out and ended up having quite a while of a time, but ending up going to Oxford in the autumn instead of continuing her season. Throughout Oxford, she didn't do all that much work. She did enough to still get a degree, but she certainly didn't come out with flying colours. And then after that, a chance meeting ended up allowing her to start work in a publisher's at quite a low level. And the, her life is just absolutely fascinating. She has a really interesting way of discussing the people that she met. And it's just incredibly fascinating, famous people from the mid 20th century, really just if they were English and involved in the sort of literary society, she probably met them. So this was really interesting because of that. And being quite a young woman and friends with a lot of older people because her father was so involved being an Oxford Don. She ended up being invited to places she probably wouldn't have got to without that and living a really, really interesting life. I definitely want to pick up more from her. Her writing is an absolute joy to read and the she's not afraid to be self-critical, which is nice, but nor does she back away from saying that she did have a privileged life and that she was very lucky. Um, so that's one of the places that she spent time in over the war. And then see if I can find her wedding dress because a big theme throughout her younger life and throughout this book is history. And specifically, as the title says, my history. She read a book when she was very young, which got her thoroughly sort of passionate about history in a way that you sort of do as a child and you think it belongs to you and you have a very sort of attached emotional reaction to it. And throughout her life, history has played a massively important thing. And the first person she really ended up sort of being caring about that deeply is Mary Queen of Scots. And so when she got married, she had that headdress. This is a photo by Cecil Beaton, who actually as a present did her wedding photos. Um, but that headdress is based off an image in the earlier books of Mary Queen of Scots, who she did eventually go on to write a history book about. And the theme of history being such a great big role and not necessarily excelling at school in it, but having it become a passion that she loved outside of school and became something that was really a driving force through her life is something I can totally relate to. And I think a lot of people can will be able to relate to. Whether it's actually history themselves or whether it's another subject, I think that sort of feeling that you can get that she expresses wonderfully throughout this book can be very relatable to. So overall, I absolutely loved this book. I will be picking up a lot more from Antonia Fraser, both non-fiction and fiction, and I'd certainly like to read her later autobiography. And if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below and I'll see you in a video soon. Bye!